Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome to episode 3 of our JDA tutorial series. Now in this episode, we're going to be talking about events and how to actually handle them. So in the Discord API, an event is thrown anytime something meaningful happens. So for example, when a user sends a message in chat, or a user updates their avatar, their profile picture, or maybe they get a new role in a server. All of those things are meaningful actions that happen, and when one of those things happens, Discord is going to throw an event at us, and we can either choose to handle it and do something about it, or just ignore it entirely. So in order to start listening to these events, we're going to actually create a new package over here in our tutorial bot package. Just right click on that and create a new package, and we're going to call this listeners. listeners. And uh, as you might have guessed from the name, this is going to contain classes that listen for events and handle uh, whatever implementation we want for them. So we're going to create a new Java class inside of here, and we're going to call this, well, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call this event listener, a very generic name. Uh, but yeah, uh, so this class, what we have to first do is make sure that it extends a JDA class called listener adapter. So extends listener adapter. By extending this class, we are essentially getting access to all of the events that JDA is providing to us through the Discord API. So what you can do is actually go over to code up here in the top left corner and hit override methods, or you can press control O. And this will actually show you all of the methods that you can override. And every single one of these methods is pretty much a event that we can override. We can change the, uh, the response to. So uh, there's so many here, you can just scroll through all of them and, and choose all sorts of different events. But a better way to sort of organize this is to actually go into the description of this video, click on that first link, and it will take you to this uh, JDA wiki page, which I've mentioned before. And they actually have a little uh, tab here called list of events that shows all of the available events that you can choose from. And it's really comprehensive. You can see just how many events there actually are. Um, there are so many of these that I've never even used before and probably never will, but they're just amazing to have so many options. So let's choose one that we think is interesting. Like, uh, for example, um, let's do on message. Let's do an on message event. So let's scroll down to messages. Where is messages? Message events. Let's do message reaction add events. So this is going to, uh, fire every time a reaction, an emoji, is added to a message. So uh, in order to actually override this event, what we can do is again go to code, override methods, and we're going to search for on message reaction add. And you can see right there, it kind of auto fills it in for us. We can click this specific method, hit OK. And yeah, we now have this actual method here. So again, this uh, every all the code inside of this uh, particular method here is going to run whenever a uh, message is uh, reacted to, when a reaction is added to a message. So we can add pretty much whatever we want here. But uh, an idea I had for this kind of first uh, event here is I want it so that when a user reacts to a message, I want our bot to send to the main sort of like channel a little message that says, like for example, Technovision reacted to a message with uh, thumbs up, for example, thumbs up in the hashtag uh, testing channel, for example. So I want our bot to respond with this kind of information, almost like we're logging um, reactions. So to do that, the first thing we need to do, of course, is get uh, the actual data from this event. So we have this event object here, this message reaction add event object. And if we uh, just take this event object and see what's on it, you can see that there's a ton of just data that we can access that JDA provides to us. So we can get the reaction, which is the emoji that was added to the actual message. We can get the guild that this occurred in. We can get the user who actually uh, added the reaction itself the channel it happened in, and there's really just so much information that you can get from this. Uh, and if we were to get something like, for example, the guild and like dot get guild, we now have access to the guild that this happened in. And now we can do stuff with the guild. So there's just so many options and you know, it'd be, it'd take hours for me to kind of go through all of them. Uh, so really you have to mess around with these for yourself, but just know that everything that you're going to access is pretty much from this event object here. So uh, the first thing I want to get is the user that added this reaction. So let's do events.getUser. And you can see this returns a user object. So we're gonna set this to a user object called user. And we can import this class. 
Cool, so we now have the user that actually added this reaction. Uh, let's get some more uh, data before we actually write our string. So let's also get the emoji that was reacted with. So string emoji is equal to, and again, we're gonna take this event object and do dot get, and we're gonna get the reaction. Again, a reaction is that emoji that you added to the message. And then this is a reaction object, I believe. So we have to do more to get the actual uh, string emoji. So uh, I think the next thing we have to do is to, uh, get uh, reaction emote or yeah get reaction emote and then uh, get as reaction code so this is going to get the actual emoji code for this emoji and uh, yeah and you know this is not the only way you can get the emoji of course if you wanted to from the reaction do other things like uh, there's there's lots of options here i think there was uh you can get it as an emoji or uh, a, like, I don't know why you would need to have a Boolean emoji, but, oh, is an emoji. Yeah, you can check if it is an emoji. Uh, you can get the name of the emoji, all that kind of stuff. But we're just gonna do uh, gets as reaction code. Okay, so we have the emoji now. Next piece of information I want is the channel that this occurred in. So I'm gonna get a channel object, channel channel is equal to events dot get channel. There we go. And we can import this as well. And uh, so this channel object, we can do a bunch of stuff with this as well. You can see that we can uh, get the name of the channel, get the type, all this kind of fun stuff. Uh, instead of getting the actual channel itself, since we don't want to do anything with the channel, I just want to get the name of the channel. Let's let's actually make a string here called channel, uh, channel mention. And uh, we can actually from get channel, we can do stuff like get, uh, get name or get as a mention. So let's get it as a mention here. And if you don't know what a mention is, that's in Discord, when you see kind of like something like hashtag general, and you can click on it and it takes you to the general channel. Another mention is like if you were to add a certain role, like at Technovision or something like that. Those are all mentions, they're little clickable things in your messages. So we're gonna get a, a channel mention here. And you can even get, if you wanted to, a, a hyperlink, a jump link to the message that this uh, occurred on. So you can do that with like event dots get jump uh, URL. And this would actually get the jump URL. Uh, so maybe we can get this as well. Let's, let's just do this string jump link is equal to. Cool. So now that we have all this data, we want to actually put it into a string and send it back to the, the Discord server. We want our bot to respond. So let's first make a string message. Uh, I guess we could call it, yeah, just string message is the name. And uh, let's first get the user. So. We want to have the user and let's get the user. I don't want to mention them because it might be annoying if we ping users all the time. So let's get them as a tag, which is just their, their username in text format. Um, and I notice here on this user object, you can get a lot of stuff. You can get like their avatar and their ID, all this kind of stuff. But uh, we're going to get them as a tag. And then we're going to uh, continue the string with, so the username, so Technovision, for example, reacted to a message uh, with, and then we're gonna add the emoji. So let's get that emoji string here. So Technovision reacted to a message with, you know, the thumbs up emoji in the, and we wanna add that channel mention, channel mention, channel. So just to run through this, it's gonna say, for example, if I were to react to a message, Technovision reacted to a message with thumbs up emoji in the, hashtag general channel, for example. Great, and if we wanted to, we could also add this jump link. I'm not sure if you can do hyperlinks in uh, in text format. I think that only works for embeds, but you could do like a hyperlink like this and throw the jump link in there like that uh, with a, uh, you know, a variable instead, of course, but I'm just not gonna do that uh, because it's a lot of work, but uh, cool. So we have the message now, and now we need to send it back to the channel. So uh, the, the channel I wanna send it back to is the default channel, which is kind of what users set as their, their main hub for uh, like the general chat. So we can get that with events.gets, uh, I think get guild, yeah. We're gonna get the guild, and then we're going to get the default channel. There we go, so that's the uh, base guild message channel. Uh, and with this, we can actually dot send message here. And this is gonna how you're, how you're gonna send messages back to Discord. And we can throw in our message object into here. There we go. But you're gonna notice something real quick. Uh, if we hover over this, it's gonna say result of message channel dot send messages ignored. 
And the reason for this is because what we are doing here is actually a action, a Discord action. We're asking Discord to do something. And so we need to actually queue it up because it is a REST action. Now to make sense of this, uh, well, first I should show you that in order to fix this, you can just queue it up by doing dot queue. It's all you need to do and it queues up the action uh, so that Discord will actually execute it. If you don't add this dot queue on the end, uh, nothing will actually happen here. And I'll kind of explain why. So uh, when you ask Discord to do an action, so an action would be something like sending a message or adding a role to a user or retrieving some sort of information. Uh, anytime you ask Discord to perform an action, it is going to uh, perform a REST action and we need to make sure that we queue them up so that they're executed in order because it would be really annoying if we sent a bunch of messages or performed a bunch of actions, but they happened in a different order than what we wanted them to. Uh, that would be obviously very annoying if you were doing a very complicated command or something or uh, you know handling an event. So we wanna make sure that we're queuing them up in the right order. And we also wanna make sure that it doesn't freeze our bots uh, while it's executing it. So if we're sending a really long message that takes Discord like a second or two seconds to send, uh, we don't want it to just like freeze our bot over. Uh, we wanna still be able to use our bot. So we wanna queue this as a rest action. So yeah, and you'll figure out when to use .q uh, over time, but pretty much anytime you're asking Discord to do something for you, like sending a message, you're gonna add that .q on the end. Cool, so this should actually work great now, but we haven't registered this uh, event listener to our, our bot class yet. So it doesn't know to actually look at this class at all. Uh, so to do that, we can go to our tutorial bot main bot class. And you wanna kinda come down here and go to uh, down here. And I'm just gonna make a little note here, register listeners. And we're gonna take our shard manager object, which remember is kind of like what's running our bot. We're gonna take that shard manager object and we're going to add event listener. And now we can pretty much just instantiate our listener class in here. So new, and we I, we called it event listener, so new event listener. And there we go. So now we're telling our shard manager, we're telling our bot to listen to this class, oops, uh, to listen to this class and handle the events that we've, we've kind of overridden in here. So now let's actually try out this event by running our bot again in the top right corner here, or you can right click on your main class and hit run uh, the main method there. And it's going to build and just run for a second. And there we go, we have no errors. So let's hop to our Discord server real quick. And uh, we have our tutorial bots here and it is online. And so our event was again, let's pull this up here. We are listening for when a reaction is added to a message. So let's uh, add a message in, our general is our default channel, so I wanna do this somewhere else. Let's do it in uh, bot commands, for example. So this is me testing it out earlier, but uh, let's send a message that just says, hey, I am a new user. All right, so uh, nothing yet right in the general channel, but if we add a reaction, so let's add the thumbs up emoji. There you go. You can see that we did get a actual message in general here, and it is from Techno, uh, not Technobot, TutorialBot, uh, wrong bot name. Uh, so there we go, we have the username, so Technovision reacted to a message with thumbs up in the bot commands channel. Awesome, now let's try this out just in one er other area, like uh, let's just do general, so um, another test, woo. <laughs> and let's throw uh, the heart emoji on there. And there we go, everything is great, it's using the right information for everything. Cool, so now we know that our events are actually working. So that's pretty much all you need to know for traditional events, but I'm gonna show you another example just so we can kind of have some more experience messing around with this. Uh, so another event that a lot of people think is really fun to mess with is on uh, message received, which fires every time someone sends a message in Discord. So let's override that by going to code, override methods, and on message received. Cool, so this is another uh, really popular event to override. And uh, this is gonna allow us to actually listen to message content and respond accordingly. If uh, you're curious, this is actually how traditional text commands and even like uh, auto mod moderation kind of stuff used to work back in the day before Discord introduced slash commands. But uh, you can do some fun stuff here. Like for example, uh, we're gonna get the message that was actually sent. So again, this is gonna fire whenever a message is sent in Discord. So we can get the message with string message is equal to events. And then again, from that event object, we can get uh, pieces of data. So in this case, this is a different object. This is a message received event object. So it's gonna have different pieces of data. 
So like, for example, we can actually get the message now from here, or we could get the author of this message, the person who wrote it, uh, all this sort of fun stuff. So let's get the message, but this is going to get a message object. So to get it in string form, we're going to get uh, dot get content raw. And you can also get it as like stripped content or other sorts of uh, formats, but we're going to get content raw and that is going to get the actual message itself in string form. And so what I want to do is when someone types the word ping, let's say, I want us to respond with the word pong, just something very simple. So we can check that with if message dot contains uh, ping, for example. Uh, so if message contains ping, uh, and you could also use equals, you know, if you wanted to do that instead, but if the message contains the word ping, we are gonna respond by doing events dot get channel, and then we're gonna send it back to that same channel. So send message, uh, oops, dot send message, and we're gonna respond with pong. And again, remember we are asking Discord to do an action here, so we need to queue it up with dot queue. There we go. So this should work great, and uh, we can test this out right now. And because we got the event channel, this is gonna send it back to the same channel that this event occurred in. Uh, so let's go back to Discord, and uh, let's test it out in bot commands. So uh, let's do some normal kind of messages like, hey, hello, what's up? You can see nothing happens, but if we type uh, ping, for example, there we go, our bot responds with pong. And because we were checking not just equals, but uh, if it contains the word at all, we can also do something like, hey, can I ping you? And because it contains the word ping, it's actually gonna respond. Now, there are actually a lot of events that you may actually try to override here in this event listener class, and you're gonna do everything perfectly, sort of write your own code, but then when you run the bot, you're gonna notice that the event doesn't fire for some reason. And a lot of, this really frustrates a lot of new people because it's not really explained very well in my opinion, but uh, essentially, there are a lot of events that are locked behind what is called a gateway intent. We're gonna be talking about that in the next episode and talking about how you can use events that require gateway intents. But essentially what you need to know is that uh, sometimes a event requires sensitive data and Discord needs to give that data out only to people who have asked for permission. So for example, if we were to try to override a event called uh, on guild member join, for example, uh, so this event, you know, just like you would expect, it's going to fire when a member joins your, your Discord server, your guild, right? But uh, if you actually fill this out, you're going to notice that it doesn't work. Uh, and that's because we need to actually ask Discord for a gateway intent to use it. So again, I'm going to talk about this more in detail in the next episode. Uh, but I just wanted to let you guys know about this now so that if you're messing with events and you notice that some of them aren't working, that is why. And uh, yeah, it's not just this one. There's actually a ton of events that require gateway intents. And in fact, Discord actually recently announced that this uh, event right here, the on message received event, will also be requiring a gateway intent starting August 2022 of this year. So by the time you watch this video, this uh, actual event right here might even require an intent as well. But again, we'll talk about that in the future. All right, that's gonna do it for events. Thanks guys so much for watching. Remember that the best way to sort of learn how to use these things is to just mess around with them and try new things. So go ahead and head over to that wiki I showed you. Just try out as many events as you can and see what kind of fun stuff you can come up with. And I will see you in the next episode.